Hello guys, welcome again to our CS Circuit Switching Core course. Today we are going to talk about very important topic in our course, which is the identities in CS Core Networks. I consider this chapter a very important one, because in any core interview you will be asked about the identities and its role in the network. Also to understand the signaling flow in the CS Core Networks, you have first to understand the roles and types of all the network identities. Let's now start the chapter, where upon completion of the chapter you will learn. MC is the SIM card identifier. MSISDN is the number of the subscriber. IMEI is the user equipment identifier. TMSI is a temporary identifier for each user. And finally LAI, which is the location identifier. We have three types of identities in our network. The first one is user identities, second one is equipment identities, third one is network identities. Let's first start with the user identities. In user identities, the most important identity we have here is the MC. MC is abbreviation of International Mobile Subscriber Identity. When a normal user goes to the store of any mobile operator, like Vodafone, Orange, BT, and he buys a SIM card. This SIM card contains a unique code, which we call MC. So MC is a unique identifier for each SIM card. Accordingly, if you lost your SIM card and you need to replace it with a new one, the new SIM card will have a new MC, unlike the MC of the old SIM card. So every subscriber in a certain mobile operator will be having a unique MC, which is totally different than the MC of any other subscriber. Each MC consists of three main parameters which are MCC, Mobile Country Code, MNC, Mobile Network Code, MSIN, Mobile Station Identification Number. MCC is the code of the country you exist in, so that all the mobile operators inside United Kingdom have the same MCC. Second parameter is the MNC, which is the code of the network inside the country so that each mobile operator inside the United Kingdom will be having the same MCC but different MNC. Last one is the MSIN, which is the subscriber code inside his network. Let's give an example here. If we have four subscribers in UK Vodafone network, all of them will be having the same MCC and MNC, but each of them will be having different MSIN. MC besides its function of identifying users inside the network, it is used also in some signaling call flows, like call flows and SMS flows. We will explain its function in more details in the upcoming lectures. Last thing that we need to mention in the MC, it has a maximum number of digits 15 digit, and it can be less than that in some countries, of course depending on the code of the country, and network code inside the country. That's all for the MC. Now let's talk about the MSISDN. As I stated at the beginning of this lecture, MSISDN is the calling number of the subscriber. I mean here when a normal user needs to call another user, he types his MSISDN number in his mobile and then calls him. That's what I mean by MSISDN. It consists of three parameters like the MC which is the CC, NDC, and SN, where CC is the country code, and the NDC is the network destination code, and the SN is the subscriber number. Please note that the country code here, and the network destination code is totally different than that codes which exits in the MC, because the codes used in MC, only core engineers can see it, while the codes in the MSISDN all the normal users can see it. Regarding the number of digits of the MSISDN, it differs from one country to another depending on the country code and destination code. MSISDN has some functions in call signaling scenarios where it is used by MSC to determine which HLR node serving this B number party. Further information about this part will be presented in the upcoming lectures. That's all for the MSISDN. Now let's talk about the IMEI. 
It stands for International Mobile Equipment Identity. IMEI is the identifier for each mobile equipment all over the world, so that any mobile handset has a unique identifier that no other mobile handset share this identifier with it. This identifier is called the IMEI. Usually this number is written on the mobile box. It's important to keep this number saved, as if the mobile handset is lost or stolen you can find it using this number. IMEI classify any mobile handset in the network into three types, blacklist, whitelist, and graylist. Blacklist means that this mobile handset is stolen, so the network will block this mobile handset from connecting to the network. Graylist means that this mobile still not used, but this doesn't mean it is blocked. It just needs some actions like to be owned by someone first. And finally the whitelist, it means that this mobile handset has no issue and its user can use it normally. The database that stores this IMEI numbers in the network is called EIR. We explained it in the network nodes lecture. Now, let's see from signaling perspective, how the networks knows whether this mobile handset is blacklist, gray list, or white list. First of all, MSC will request the IMEI number from the user equipment by sending the signaling message IMEI identity request. This request will be sent from the MSC to the BASA or RNC, passing by BTS or Node B, going finally to the user equipment. The user equipment will reply with the signaling message IMEI identity response. This message will be sent from the UE passing by the BTS or node B, going to BSA or RNC, and then finally to the MSC. Now, MSC will take the IMEI from the message and then initiates a new message called check IMEI. This message will be sent from the MSC to the EIR. Now, the EIR will check the IMEI in its database to see whether this number is blacklisted number or whitelisted. If it is blacklisted, it will respond to the MSC with IMEI blacklisted. So now the MSC will take the decision of blocking this mobile handset from accessing the network. This scenario always happens during the user attachment to the network, where from the attach procedures is checking the IMEI. Now I think we know exactly what is meant by IMEI and how the signaling flow inside the network to check it. That's all for the IMEI. We have another equipment identifier is called IMEI software version. This identifier identifies the current software version that is currently installed on the mobile handset. I mean here if you have an iPhone mobile so the software version you have in your mobile handset, let's say for example iOS 13. By the way, the software version of the mobile handset is very important, as that some mobile operators produce some network features depending on the software version installed on the mobile. I mean here if a mobile operator decides to start using the voice over LTE, it must first align with all the mobile handset producers, like Apple and Samsung, to broadcast a software version on their mobiles to be compatible with the voice over LTE. That's all for the equipment identities. Now back again to the user identities. We have here the TMSI. It stands for Temporary Mobile Subscriber Identity, and from its name, it is a temporary identifier that is given to each mobile subscriber. Mobile Operators decides that MC is an important identifier that needs to be more secured. As we said before, the MC is used by mobile user to identify himself while communicating with the mobile network in the air interface. So, instead of sending the MC in the air interface each time during this communication, we can send the TMSI instead of it. This is done to more protect the MC from any hacker who can trace it, so that he can know the user activities. Let's see in a high-level view how this happens. First of all the user attaches to the network using the MC identifier. Then, after the registration is complete, the MSC allocate ATMSI and sends it to the mobile user and order him in future transactions between...